and we are live at my campfire. I'm starting a little early because it's raining. There is a storm coming in and I'm under a canopy. So let's see if you can see my fire. Um, the fire is right there. Uh, so these particular, at the campground, they give us this like fire grate thing. So basically, that's where we can have the fire. We can't have it anyplace else. Um, and I was planning to go live in 15 minutes, but I'm not sure if you can if you can hear, but it's raining right now. And I'm not sure how long we'll be able to do this live. So I thought I would show you the different things that we do during a campfire. So um, one of the things that we do is we actually make s'mores and so s'mores are made with marshmallows marshmallows and chocolate chocolate and graham crackers so we would make s'mores at a campfire and what else do we do we tell stories um, we usually sometimes we sing songs um, right now, like I said, it's raining, so I'm able to do this campfire right now because of the fact that I have a canopy above me. Let me see if I can show you that canopy. Um, right there is the canopy um, because otherwise I would be sitting out here in the rain. Uh, tomorrow it's going to be raining all day long. Um, yeah, so good evening or good evening, Yuri. Right now I started a little early because it's raining out and I am under a canopy, um, so the fire is going. You can see it in the grate there. Thank you so much for joining. And please hit the like as well if you could. Um, I decided to start early because we are having a big storm. I looked on the radar and there's, they show um, the rain um, just coming up the coast. And so tomorrow it's gonna be raining all day long and people are putting all their stuff and getting the stuff out of the, out of the, um, out from outside, putting it underneath canopies. Um, and I have a canopy. I'm a little bit afraid that the winds, because the winds get really, really strong here by by the ocean, I'm kind of afraid that it might blow up because I've had canopies that no matter how much I staked them down and weighted them down, that storms come through and the wind is really, really strong. And the canopy, one time I got one brand new and the canopy blew over and was broken and that was it done so i'm hoping we have staked down this and we have canopy weights and we actually use these things called ratcheting ties to um to really stake this thing down so hopefully that stays down and it doesn't get ripped up and blown over and broken but anyway um things that we do we actually make something called um s'mores that we use marshmallows um, and we use chocolate and what else do we do we use grand crackers and we'll put that we'll put it on one of these one of these um, a stick or this actually is a metal thing and we'll put the marshmallow on there and we'll roast it and we will then after we roast it we'll put the grand cracker and then we'll put um, some of the chocolate and we'll squish it together and we'll eat it and that's called a s'more um, and what else do we do? So I have different kinds of wood. This is driftwood. This is wood that I collected by the ocean. Hi, Cat. She was over by, actually, I collected this by the river and Cat was just by the river. Um, and so it's water, wood that has been drifting in the ocean and dried up on the beach. And so this is something that I'm burning as well as regular wood that I bought from the camp store. So I have this wood here. This is a hardwood and it will burn for a long time. Um, Yuri says hi to you, Kat. Hello. You wanna come around and say hello? Um, so. Hello, Yuri. And we have someone else. Hello, guys, what a beautiful um, place. Um, what time is it there? It is 8.15, um, 8.20. I was going to start this in 15 minutes, but it's raining here. And I am only able to sit out here by this campfire because I have a canopy above me to keep me dry right now. And the fire is not under the canopy, but fortunately it's hot enough that 
this little bit of rain is not putting it out yet. Um, other things that we do, oh, so we can roast, um, we actually have Polish sausage that Katerina actually burnt. It's quite burnt right now. Yeah, because I left it there for the entire time that I went to the river, which was a while, so it's pretty burnt on one side. Yeah, so this is kielbasa and it's pretty burnt. Um, so that's another thing that we do is we like will roast um, sausage over the fire and this is um, Polish sausage called kielbasa. Um, so we really like to do that as well. And other things that we do, well, uh, other things that I do to keep this fire going for a long time is I buy, we're only allowed to buy wood from the camp store, but this is not really wood. This is a like some sort of like made out of paper and cardboard and it lasts for three hours. So I buy this stuff and I put that in there and it'll last for three hours and I figure it doesn't break the rule. They have the rule of only buying um, wood from the camp store because in um, Massachusetts and New England, we have something called the Asian beetle that is attacking our trees and we don't want to, um, they don't want to have wood coming from other locations. They so, say that's the reason, but they also just want people to buy wood from their store instead. Yeah, it's pretty expensive actually, um, the wood that they sell. $7.50? Uh, $7.50 and you get like four pieces of wood for that. And so it's pine wood, so it burns really quickly. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'll often go on the beach and I'll collect some some driftwood to burn as well, as well as buying these things. These um, because I figured this doesn't break the rule because this isn't really wood, so that's what I will burn as well. Um, so if what questions you have on campfires, if you have them, let me know or let me know where you're coming from as well, and be sure to like the video as well. Um, so we're camping here for two weeks, and this is day four and our third night I think we've been here four days three nights um, so this will be our fourth night um, is the rain warm Katarina you were out in the rain is it warm well, it's not actually warm just not that cold either because it's so small okay so she says in case you can't hear her it's not really warm but it's not super cold because it's just a little bit of rain um, I think that it's probably like 65 degrees Fahrenheit and it's quite windy. Um, the wind is picking up. This is um, a pretty big storm that's coming up the coast. Um, right now, I, I looked on the radar and it's in Boston and it's coming up. We do have the rain, but there'll be, I believe there'll be thunderstorms in a couple hours. So with thunderstorms and the fact that we're by the ocean, the winds get pretty high and pretty heavy. So I'm afraid of this canopy. I'm kind of afraid that it might get blown but I'm hoping that we've really staked it down and it's not going to get blown away um, so what else can I tell you about about uh, campfires here so one thing that we do we also have this stuff and it's made out of what is it in the stuff um, it's there's a lot of it's like copper sulfate yeah, and so it basically what it does is we can throw it in the fire and it will make the fire change color. Watch this. So Kat's going to do that and I'm going to try to point this to the fire so you can see that. Um, so basically it's just like a chemical reaction. It's kind of fun. We usually like to try to like, if we're going to eat something, try to eat it first. Hello Talking America. Thank you for joining. Happy Wednesday. So I'm not sure if you can see. It's probably a little hard to see, but it is causing there to be blue flames. It's probably hard to see with this. But um, yeah, there are some blue flames there, though in the in the video it looks all yellow to me. But it's coming out see the blue. Okay. blue and green flames. So it's just kind of fun. I'll show you again. So it's called rainbow flame crystals. That, that This box is about as old as me. Yes, yes, that, exactly. This thing was full and I bought this when she was, when Kat was just a baby. And we've just been using a little bit each time we go camping. So it's just another fun thing to do at the campfire is to throw this stuff in and to see like some really cool colors in the campfire. Um, so we usually will have a campfire every night if it's nice out, if it's not raining. Um, we usually will sit around the campfire. We'll, you know, just kind of chill, maybe read a book, maybe just talk. We'll roast the marshmallows. Um, let me know in the chat if you have campfires where you live. Um, I'd love to know that as well. Um, 
So what else do we do? Oh, we have, so you know what? We have skunks around here. Um, there are skunks here and I think they are here because we are in this campground where people are cooking and there's a lot of food. So sometimes we'll see skunks walking around. Okay. So Yuri says, do you have a, did you have a good rest during the time you were there? Do you prefer to stay there or do you want to go home? So I actually, it's, I find it very restful and I think that I get a better rest here because I don't have all the things that I need to do at home so I can just really relax and not really, you know, think, oh, I got to get up and do this. Um, because there's nothing I really need to do, I, I definitely feel like it's, I have a nice hammock over there. I think I showed you in the last video. I'm not sure if I showed the hammock, but we have a hammock and we can sit in the hammock. Um, the camper is very comfortable. I like sitting just out here um, at the campsite or going to sit by the beach by the river um, So I do find it to be very peaceful and I'm in no rush to go home. We have um, Well, we're we have like what ten days left. So we're I don't think either one of us are in a rush to go home um, What else can I say about this so so oh the skunk so we have skunks um, because of the fact that I think this is a campground where there's a lot of food and people are cooking. So one time we actually had our, like we put our like, stuff in our trash bag, all the, all the garbage and stuff. And we were sitting and we're eating and a skunk came by and I was sure that the skunk would not go through my trash because I have these mint trash bags. And I was sure that skunks did not like that because the package says that, that raccoons don't like it. So I figured, well, skunks are kind of like related. Well, that wasn't true. Apparently the skunk didn't mind the mint and tore open the bag and we just sat there and waited because we were afraid that if we got up, we would get sprayed. So Can there's, I tell a story? yeah, absolutely. So Kat's gonna tell a story. So um, two nights ago, not um, ca counting this night, um, I was sleeping in my hammock. Oh, well, not my hammock, but a hammock um, in a tree over there, which mom is, not showing you. I thought you were. Yeah, it's fine. Um, when you were moving the camera, and um, it was very cold, and I went to sleep wearing nothing but um, I I wasn't wearing like anything but my shorts and my t-shirt because I, I didn't have like any sweatshirt like I'm wearing right now or longer pants. So um, it was very cold, and at about 3 a.m. in the morning, I woke up and. I got out to go use the bathroom, and when I came back, I was sitting in, um, sitting in my hammock when I heard, like, a weird noise, and I'm like, huh, what's that? And I look next to me, and there's just a skunk, like, just sniffing around, um, and that was, I, it was worrying, because I didn't want to get sprayed by this skunk, but, so I couldn't really move, and I see more skunks for just, like, about 45 minutes just passing by. Um, it was pretty we weird. I was also kind of scared because I didn't want to get sprayed by the skunk. Um, but then I decided when I when I finally saw the last one walk by towards the other people's campsite, I looked I looked behind me in the camper, not in the camper, in the hammock, and I saw there were no skunks, and I quickly took all my sleeping stuff and ran inside to the camper because I did not want to get sprayed by skunks. They are cute, though. They are cute. And I think last night, um, Kat said she... Asked something. Okay. Um, let's see. Let me look and see what people said. Okay, Yuri, did you, did you begin the stream earlier? Yes, I did. I did actually beginning a little earlier because it started to rain. Um, but I think you didn't miss much. I kind of repeated, I was talking about the s'mores and stuff. Um, I'm not sure how the weather is going to be. So I decided to start a little earlier. Um, so last night actually Kat slept inside and she had the windows of the, of our camper open. And, um, you can see the, um, I'll show the camper over there. Let me see. So the windows open and so she, she had the windows open there and she could watch out all night long and see the, um, she actually saw some skunks and what do you saw some skunks that were kind of like chasing after each other? Yeah, I think they were playing because, um, um, because they, they were like, they weren't spraying each other. Um, and no, fortunately I have not, um, 
I have not experienced being sprayed by a skunk directly. I have definitely smelled it before, by like, um, just like if like a skunk sprayed somewhere on the road or something, mm -hmm. or sometimes in other campsites. But um, I have never directly experienced. I'll tell you, one this. time my aunt has a farm and they're under their porch got sprayed. And that smell is like impossible to get rid of. And it permeates through the whole entire house. Oh, hello, um, Piedad. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, um, Piedad. I, Piedad, you are Venezuela, right? Or is it Colombia? Because I talked to few, two people. Um, oh, Venezuela. No, no, Colombia. Thank you so much for joining, Piedad. Um, I think at the same month when I spoke to you, I spoke to um, Lusmila in Colombia. So um, thank you so much for joining from Colombia. Um, and I know we had a conversation on the YouTube channel. So thank you for joining. So we're talking about campfires. We're camping right now, Piedad. And we're camping here for two, two weeks. And we are really close to the ocean over there. About, I don't know, 300 feet is the river. And... And over in that direction is the ocean. It's about a 10 minute walk to the ocean. So there's a river here that, that the Merrimack River that goes out to the ocean. And there's a beach by the river. People will go there for fishing and also bring their dogs because they're not allowed to bring the dogs to the ocean beach. And so we're having the campfire. We went live yesterday and showed the um, our camper and stuff. So good night, stay safe, thank you so much. Um, I'm not sure how to say your name, but thank you so much for letting us know that. Yeah, so we're going to be hopefully staying dry and staying, um, you know, because we are having a storm coming in. We've had really good weather. Every day has been sunny and warm. So we're going to have our first day of rain. So we're probably going to like um, stay inside, play games, maybe watch a movie tomorrow uh, because we'll, it'll be raining all day. So there's not a lot we can do. When it's raining um, when we're camping so um, let's see what else I can tell you so we did go live yesterday and we showed the inside of our camper we have a camper that is um, basically it's very similar to the one that's directly over there um, that's not my camper but it's very similar to that one where it's hard and then there's like two beds that pop out of the sides um, so I love this live. Um, it's so nice for another video in which you can show us other places. Um, and so it's an hour earlier in Colombia. Um, yeah, so it's 8.35 and it's 7.35 in Colombia, more or less. Um, so thank you. Um, yeah, so basically we are an hour north of Boston and we are staying by, by the ocean for two weeks. We're camping, like I said, it's a camper very much like the one over there um, where it's hard. I pull it with my truck. Um, it's not really a truck, but it's a Toyota 4Runner. It's a SUV and I pull it and I will um, basically, um, I can connect it to my, my 4Runner and, and tow it on the highway and tow it here to the beach. Um, and so we've had this for, I think we got it in 2018. We didn't go camping last year. So this is our third year actually camping with it because last year, because of COVID, we didn't go camping. Uh, but we camped every year that I've got it, we've camped like twice. Um, this time, I think we might camp once, maybe twice, depending on, we might go one more time. Um, Talking America says, what's the temperature there? Um, I, if I started a campfire, I think I'd melt. Well, it, it has cooled down. It was like 75, but I think it might be 65 or 60. It's raining now. But with the ocean, it cools down to around like 60, 65. So it is possible to have a fire here. Um, and then during the day, it's been, it's been very reasonable. Like I think 75 has been the highest, so it's not bad at all. 81 there. I think you are in the south somewhere, right? Talking in America. I'm not exactly sure where, but I remember you're in the south. So 81 degrees there. Like I said, I don't know what that equals to Celsius, but it's um, right now I'm actually feeling a little bit of the rain. Like I have this um, tarp over me. Oh, Gulf of Mexico, just north of the Gulf of Mexico. Okay. Yeah. So I, but I, I'm sitting by the edge of the tarp, uh, edge of the canopy, and I'm feeling the rain like drip on me a little bit because the wind is blowing the rain um so that is why i started the this um 
stream early. Um, so what else can I tell you? So we have been here, like I said, we've been here four days and we've been, let's see, um, was there thunder? Not yet, but there's, there might be thunder for sure tonight. So that's why, um, I think they said thunderstorms around 11, which is in two hours. But if I hear thunder, I'm going to end the live and go inside. Um, anyway, yeah, we are expecting thunderstorms for sure. And thunderstorms here by the ocean can get pretty severe with winds. I, I'll tell you one story. I have this camper now, but before that we had a tent and we were getting water in the tent and there was a thunderstorm. It was a crazy thunderstorm. So we had gone and bought this big tarp and my daughter was inside the tent and we were like cleaning up all the water, but the, we bought this big tarp, 30 by 30 feet. And we were outside with lightning um, and thunder and my son and I were trying to stake down all of the stakes around to keep the tarp around this tent. Now, then we cleaned up all the water because the water had gotten inside of the tent. And the next day it stopped raining. It was like really crazy that night just trying to like have the lightning striking close by and trying to, to nail down those stakes and it was blowing up. The stakes were blowing up because it was the wind was so crazy. And the next day it did stop and we decided to go to the river because we we're right by the river we decided to go in and fly kites by the river and so we just walked over and started flying kites and somebody came over and they said are you um campsite y32 and we said yeah why and they said well your tent is blowing away well one thing we forgot to do is when we had taken off the tarp because it was so dark and dreary we didn't put those stakes back in the tent and it was still really windy here and our tent was starting to blow blow over. It didn't blow far, but it was quite crazy. What are you saying, Kat? I was going to tell, um, tell you that how the, uh, that the time that Okay, so yeah, so I had the next year we went there and our my canopy broke, so I bought a new canopy and I bought a canopy with like sides to it so I could try to stay dry because that year when we had all that rain, it was like crazy. We were trying to stay dry. We were putting shower curtains around it, trying to do whatever we could to stay dry. So I bought this new canopy and it had side walls and there was a storm coming again. So my son decided that he would tie everything possible to the canopy to try to keep it from blowing away. So he tied the bikes and he tied the camp chairs, like this camp chair here um, and bicycles to it. And we went to the store to go buy something. I don't know what we were getting. But when we came back, the, the canopy had flipped over and it had all kind of crud, crunched into itself and all of the chairs and the bikes were all in a tangled mess. And yeah, apparently the chairs and the bicycles were not enough to keep that canopy from flying off. Because like I said, when wind comes through at the campground, um, it's pretty severe. Like if you have, if it, if the wind is predicted to be like five to 10 miles an hour in downtown Salisbury by the ocean, it's probably going to be double or triple that because you're getting all that wind from the ocean. So it's much stronger. Um, but I'm not sure if you can hear the, the rain is coming down even harder right now. Um, and, but the fire is still going pretty strong. Um, are you under blue? Yes, I'm under the blue canopy. If we look up, we can see the blue canopy there. I'm under the blue canopy and you can see that I have some lights that I put up there. Um, so that's why I can sit out here right now because otherwise I'd be pretty darn cold right now. Um, no one else is sitting out by their campfires because they've all had the good sense to go inside. Um, oh, I'm gonna show you Kat. She's in her window now um, and she has a cat that is glowing. So she's got this cat that I bought her for when she went to sleepaway camp and it changes color. It is rechargeable so you can just like charge it up just like you charge your phone and it changes all different colors. And then what do you do if you tap on it, it changes, it stays one color cat? Yeah, but Chuck, you can see it's changing color right now. So let's say if I wanted it to stop on like, okay, I'll get it to blue. Prepared to punch it. 
So basically, when it's got to blue, she just punched the top of it and it's gonna stay blue now. So it's just this little um, silicon type of cat. It's made out of like a silicon material. And on the bottom is like a little light thing that you can charge. And apparently, if you like hit the top of it, it'll stay whatever color you want. Otherwise, it'll just cycle through the different colors. So you can see the, the canopy, it has like, um, it has windows that you can kind of open. They're like mesh. Well, the, 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 the side bed that pops out of our, sorry, it's not a canopy. You're right. Um, it's made out of a canvas, but it's a side bed that pops out. Um, and then basically there's like, um, windows that are screen windows and she probably should close them soon because otherwise she's going to be wet tonight. She says she'll be fine. So she might be wet, but I am going to close mine. In fact, mine are already closed because I don't like to sleep with wet covers. Uh, but basically, that's that. That's our um, camper there. Um, and that's her cat that's glowing. So go back to the fire. Um, so what else can I tell you? So we usually go camping a few times a year. We'll go camping at the beach. We go camping in the mountains and we usually go to a place called Beckett, which we will camp inside of a cabin and we'll have campfires at all these places. And depending on where we are, sometimes we sing songs. When we go to Beckett, we'll sing songs. Um, Beckett is a YMCA camp, which I believe YMCA you have all over the world. And they have all kinds of songs that they have made um, for the Beckett camp. And so Piedad saying, what is the name of that kind of camping. So this particular camping that I'm doing right now is like camping in a, um, Katarina, can you close that door too? Um, camping in a, in a camper. Um, and let's see, how far do you usually go for camping? So this particular place, um, Salisbury is an hour and 15 minutes from our house. We have gone as far as like three hours to the White Mountains um, Beckett, where we go in the cabins at the YMCA camp, is two and a half hours from our house. I, I just realized you could call camping in a camper, camper in. Um, yeah, okay, so, you know, camping in a camp. So there's a thing that I've been watching, like, videos about glamping, which is kind of like glamorous camping. So this kind of camping, people will say it's kind of glamorous because you're not in a tent and you're not roughing it. Like there's electricity, there's water, there's a bathroom and a shower, which I don't use, but people have bathrooms and showers in their campers. So it's kind of like glamping, which is because it's glamorous. Um, but we have tent camps. I don't like tent camping anymore because of so many times that I got wet and I really don't like being wet when I'm camping. So especially whenever I camped at the ocean, we were getting wet in the tent, even though my son was a boy scout. Yeah, when we can't. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, when I when I would go camping by the ocean, when I went camping by the mountains, when we were in the tent, somehow when there was big storms, we got wet. Um, and my son's a Boy Scout, which I was told that he knew how to set up that tent where we wouldn't get wet, but we still got wet. Um, but if you're new here, please, please hit the like and let me know where you're coming from. Right now we're camping and we're talking about, we're, we have a campfire going and we're talking about you know, camping and um, if you're cold, then go inside. Um, it's raining right now. We have a campfire going, but I am under a canopy, so I'm not getting rained on. And um, we're talking about camping. We're talking about campfires. Um, do you have campfires where you live? Um, right now, we are camping at Salisbury Beach. We are 10 minutes walk from the beach and a five minute walk in that direction to the river. And we usually come here every year. We'll camp here usually for one week, but this year we're camping for two weeks because last year we didn't camp because of COVID. They did have camping, but I wasn't sure if it was gonna be safe, so I didn't get a campsite and they had less capacity. They only rented out half the camp sites, so we didn't go camping. So this year we're camping for two weeks, um, but we usually also go camping in the mountains for a couple days. And we go to a place called Beckett, which is not happening this year because of COVID. Um, Beckett is a YMCA camp where we'll stay in a cabin, um, but they're not having that because of COVID. Um, they actually are having summer camps there. 
So I have never seen the ocean. Um, you're so happy. Yeah. Oh, so you never seen the ocean. Um, um, Yuri. So I love the ocean. That's one of my favorite places to go. Um, I do love camping other places, but my favorite place is the ocean by far. I think I did one little video. It was like, where would you rather go on vacation or the ocean or the mountains? And my choice is always going to be the ocean. I love the ocean more than anything. Um, so this place is really wonderful. I think I said in the last video that at one time, I think it was like the early 1900s, all of this area was full of cottages, uh, but there was a big fire and when the fire spread because they were all wooden cottages, the, um, they unfortunately got destroyed. And um, after that, the state bought the place. Um, thank you, Piedad, it is a beautiful place. The state bought this campground, this whole, all this land, and they made it a public place for people to be able to camp, to people to come to the day. You can come here for and for a day pass and go to the ocean. Um, so it was not available for everybody, but now it is, and we're very lucky to have it. It's so beautiful. I'll tell you, sometimes when we go over to the river, we'll bring our binoculars because there are seals that will, when the tide goes out, there's some rocks that will be you can see the rocks and sometimes the seals will sun themselves on the rocks so we'll bring our binoculars and we'll go out and look for the seals um, like I said we have skugs here which are cute but I wouldn't want to be sprayed by them um, there are all kinds of birds here um, I like that kind of camping um, so far it's my first time seeing that so yeah this is um, I don't know if they have this kind of camping everywhere I'm not sure if they do this in Columbia but we do like this is very popular this kind of camping in the United States. Um, people have really huge campers. They have small campers. There's all kinds of different campers. Um, and if you go around this campground, there's all kinds of different tents, but t different campers. There's campers that are size of buses. And there's one camper. They have some, some of them have slide out rooms. And one of these ones at the size of a bus, it has two slide out rooms. And in between is an outdoor shower. So I was like, wow, an outdoor, like just, it's amazing all the different things that you see in all these different campers. Um, some really old ones, there was one next door to us yesterday, they just left and they're called an Airstream and it's like this big silver and it's kind of roundish. Um, it almost looks like a, like a silver bullet or something. They're, those are called Airstreams and they're kind of like, got this kind of retro look. Um, there are campers that used to be buses that people made into campers. And there are campers that were vans that people made into campers. So there's all kinds of different ones. And it's really interesting to see the different ones when you're walking around and seeing what people have. Um, so yeah, we usually come here, like I said, every year. And we have kept camped in tents here. And I've had a pop-up camper where you had to crank it up. So do you cook fish on the fire? Um, we always do that when we're fishing. So I. I don't usually cook fish because my kids don't like fish, but I do cook things like sausage. Yeah, Katerina's like, yuck, she doesn't like fish. Um, but you, the fishing is very popular here. People fish here all the time, but I usually, I'll cook on the fire. Sometimes I, I'll cook sausage, but I also cook something called, they're called boiled dinners. So what you do is you take hamburger and you'll put like potato and some frozen vegetable and maybe some ketchup and stuff for some flavor and you'll wrap it up into the um, foil and you'll want your you'll want your um your fire to be down to coal so you wouldn't want it to be burning like this sometimes you'll want to use charcoal and you will put those foil dinners onto the coals and cook them i believe 10 minutes on each side and then 10 minutes on one side then flip it 10 minutes on the other side and then you can open them up and usually it's suggested that you use like canned potatoes because they're kind of got some moisture to them because that helps them helps that meal to not burn. And that's a really good meal to make on the fire. Um, I don't cook a lot of things on the fire. I do have a camp stove that I cook on, which I can cook anything from. It has like a, a top that I can kind of use as a barbecue, but I can also like it has burners so I can also cook pasta which I always do. My grandmother was Italian and it was a tradition to cook pasta while we were camping. Just kind of a strange thing, but I always cook pasta while I'm camping, you know, in honor of my grandmother and because I love pasta. 
um, but we'll cook anything here. Um, I can cook inside, like tomorrow when it's raining, we're gonna cook inside, and I believe we're gonna do tacos. Um, fish cooked in the fire is more tasty. I definitely would agree with you. I do like fish. Um, I haven't cooked it on the fire, but I do like like salmon for um, certain, and what else, I like haddock. Um, but like I said, my kids don't like fish, so if I cook that, I'd have to either have them make themselves something or make them a different meal. So I wish they liked fish because I know it's very healthy, but I've tried to get them to like fish and the only thing they like is tuna fish from a can. Um, so that definitely sounds like a great idea to make um, fish on the fire for sure. Um, so here, like I said, there's a lot of fishing that goes on. People will go to the river and they'll set up their fishing poles and fish and they aren't really allowed to fish on the ocean side but sometimes they do like before the lifeguards come so the lifeguards will be here from 10 in the morning until 4 in the afternoon and so if people want to fish they need to fish before that or after the lifeguards leave because when the lifeguards are here they enforce the rules of no fishing and no dogs on the beach um, so what else so tomorrow like I said it's gonna rain so we're gonna stay inside we're gonna make tacos so I'm gonna ground. I'm gonna cook some ground beef, and I'm going to then I'm gonna um, put those inside of like um, soft tacos, and I'm gonna put some Mexican cheese and some salsa and um, guacamole and stuff. So we'll have tacos inside because we're not gonna cook outside. I do have my outside cooking stove underneath this canopy, but I think it's gonna be too cold. Um, do people get a license for fishing? Um, in the camp yeah you do need a you need a license to fish in the river now if you fish in the ocean you don't need a license but to fish in the rivers and lakes you need a license and i'm not sure how much they enforce that but it is required and they need to get it before they come camping because i don't think that they sell it at the camp place so they would need to like arrange to, i think they can buy that on the internet now but i'm not sure i used to go camping with my grandfather um but that's a long time ago, so I'm really, but I remember camping with him. I mean, camping, I remember fishing with him at the ocean, and one time we caught a lobster, but it was really small, and there's a rule that the fish or the lobsters have to be a certain size, so we had to throw it back, and I was, I was really sad that I had to throw that lobster back. Most of the time when I fished, I only caught fish you couldn't eat. Um, that was the one time that I caught a lobster, and sadly, I had to send, I had to throw that back other times when I was fishing, I would catch stuff called um, sunfish, which my grandfather would take and he would bury it by the rhubarb because he said the rhubarb would grow better if he buried it. But I, every time I went fishing with him, I only caught sunfish. I never caught any sort of trout or any other fish that you could eat. So yeah, we don't really cook fish. Um, there's all kinds of other things. Like I, I don't cook too much on the fire. I should do that more often, but other things I might do is like take potatoes and wrap them up in tin foil and cook them in the fire. The sausage I'll cook on the fire and again the s'mores. Um, does anybody else have any other questions? Um, I think I'm probably going to end this pretty soon because it's the rain is getting more and more intense as I'm sitting out here. All right, well, that being said, oh, okay, so can you see, can you rent, oh, what is this skunk? Oh, there's a skunk, which you probably can't see. There's a skunk behind me. Um, I'm not sure if you can see it, but anyway, there's a skunk somewhere back there, so we'll have to be careful. Can you rent water skis? Oh, so not here, but I'm sure there are places that you can rent water skis, and I do see people um, actually using ski, um, I think the water ski mobiles, but I don't know where they could rent them. I, not around here. Um, here there is a boat launch, so you can bring your boats with you if you want, or if you have like canoes or, or, um, uh, motor boats and stuff. The side yeah. So, yeah, my daughter's telling me that the skunk is like sniffing back there, um, probably looking for some food. Uh, but yeah, you can't rent anything here. Some of the 
some of the state parks you can rent canoes and kayaks but this one doesn't have any um, rental services but i'm sure there's places along the waterfront for sure that you can rent stuff like that um other things you can do there's not a lot of things you can do here like this is a small town that part of the um the part that used to have like a lot of amusements like water slides and stuff like that has kind of like gone out of business and there's been condos built so i think there's a couple maybe one arcade um in the downtown part or the part that's by the the public part of the beach and maybe like a couple places to buy fried dough but most of the places they had like water slides and they had amusement rides and all of that is gone here so where that was they have torn it down and built condos but there's lots of other towns along the coast where there's water slides and amusement parks and all kinds of things but i like this place because when I go to the beach, that's what we do. We don't we don't go to the beach to go to the water slide. We don't go to the beach with the idea that we're going to go buy um, fried dough and play video games. There's really nothing to do but go to the beach, go to the river, swim, walk, bike ride, uh, because that's what I really want to kind of like instill in my family. Um, I have friends of mine that will go to the beach with their kids, and it costs them a lot of money because they go to the beach where there's water slides, amusement rides, video games, um, fried dough and all that kind of stuff. And before they know it, they spent maybe like a hundred dollars just to go to the beach. Um, so I like this place because there really isn't anything. I think the most you can buy is maybe like a hot dog and an ice cream. Another skunk. Katarina sees another skunk. So anyway, I better be careful. But I think if I just sit here, I'll be, I, oh, okay. English with Valentine. Thank you so much for joining. English with Valentine um, is from Dominican Republic and he makes some great videos. If you want to check out his channel, that would be awesome. Um, so we made some conversations as well. So um, English with Valentine, thank you so much for joining. I'm here at the ocean right now and Joshua is joining. Greetings from Worcester. Wow. Uh, oh, I know you, Joshua. Um, that's um, Lucy's father. Oh, hello. Hello. So um, Katarina says hello. We're we're um, we're camping by the beach for two weeks. Um, so thank you so much for joining. Um, we're talking about we have a campfire right now. It's been raining, but actually the rain has just stopped. But I know it's going to rain all day tomorrow. And it is still raining a little bit, but I'm staying dry because the canopy above me. Um, but we're we're camping here for two weeks. Um, if you're new here, please hit the like button and um, let me know where you're from. Um, we're talking about camping. We're talking about the beach, and we're talking about campfires. Do you have campfires where you live? Um, what kind of things do you? Um, uh, Luciana says hi, Katerina. So Katerina is friends with Luciana. They met at a Russian. Um, it was like a Russian festival that we went to a few years back. And so thank you so much for joining. And can a skunk bite you? Well, you know, a skunk could bite you if they have rabies. Um, we're not allowed to have skunks as pets. And one of the main reasons that we're not allowed to have skunks as pets is that there's a very high chance of rabies. Um, so yes, they could bite you. I think if any animal is approaching you, um, like a skunk or a raccoon or something like that, you need to kind of be weary and try to get away from that animal because a skunk shouldn't be approaching humans. Um, and if they are approaching humans, and especially if they have like probably foam at their mouth, they're acting strange, then it probably means they have rabies. So that is very dangerous. Get away. Um, yeah, if you were to be scratched or bitten, you would need to get shots. Rabies, there's no cure for. They have a story of somebody that was in Australia that that had adopted a stray kitten and got scratched and then they went back to England, but they didn't know that that cat had rabies. And by the time they knew it was too late. So it's very dangerous. Um, so skunks, you really wouldn't want to have them as pets anyway, because they would still probably spray, um, but they are not allowed to have them as so where do skunks live in this place? I don't know. I think they might burrow underground like other animals, like rabbits and other animals, but I don't know exactly where they would live. We think that they might live in the sand dunes, um, but I'm not sure if they're an animal that burrows and makes a den. Um, if somebody knows, let me know in the comments, but 
they I think they probably live in the dunes but they are often walking around at night because people are cooking at their sites all day and they're looking for all the food um, are they protected by law I think they are protected we certainly so here's the thing my father has a garden and whenever animals like skunks or raccoons or other animals are attacking his garden, he will catch them and he catches them with what's called a have a heart um, trap, which means it doesn't hurt the animal. And he releases them like a few miles away, but that's illegal. He's not supposed to do that. Uh, but he does it because he doesn't want the animals to be getting his, his carrots and whatever else that he's growing. So he'll, um, he'll capture them. He's captured skunks. Um, so there's one right behind me. Let me see if you can see it. Um, yep, there's one behind me. So you're not allowed to catch them, but when he catches them in the have a heart, have a heart, have a heart, um, thing, what it does is it has two sides that go down and that skunk cannot spray him because it's not able to, it can't lift its tail. So he can safely move that skunk and release it someplace else um, and not be sprayed. So there's the skunk right there. And I think he's probably smelling Katerina made. Um, yeah, he is pretty cute. Um, she made tuna casserole and I think there might be bits of tuna fish over there because we washed our dishes and I think they're tiny bits when we wash the dishes. So I think he's smelling that food and he is very cute. If they, if it wasn't for the, the spraying, you know, I, I, they are beautiful. I love them. They're very cute, but I don't want to be sprayed. I think I'm safe as long as I just sit here and I'm just going to stay sitting here until the skunk goes away <laughs> because I don't want to be sprayed. Um, but they are cute and there are a number of them here. I went camping about, 18 years ago by Salem, Massachusetts, and there were there were um, skunks there. And I thought maybe that was just a place like, you know, it was an island by the water. And I thought, geez, that was maybe that was just bad luck. We went to a place that had skunks. But I'm thinking they're at a lot of campgrounds. Um, that is a skunk, Piedad. It's a skunk. So they spray a very smelly, awful thing if they feel threatened. So if I was to go over there and chase him, he would lift his tail and he would spray me and it would smell awful. Um, he seems to go to, to you. So he was kind of heading in my direction, but I'm not scared of him because I think as long as I am not threatening him, he's not going to spray me. Um, I don't know if you can also hear, I think there's fireworks. So in Massachusetts, we're not allowed to do fireworks. Oh, in Spanish, it's called por yeah, let me see. Um, be it. Uh, I can't say that. Um, um, I'm out of, I'm out of, um, I'm rusty in my Spanish. Um, so I'm not going to try to, um, I think it's Puerco es, um, Espin. Um, but I'm a little bit rusty. I haven't been practicing. But in any case, we, I can hear fireworks. So in Massachusetts, they're illegal, but right over the border which is like literally five miles is New Hampshire where you can buy fireworks and people will buy fireworks in Mass will drive from Massachusetts buy fireworks and bring them back here in fact somebody in one of the other sites was setting them off the other night um, the police don't do anything about it skunk bite skunk bite is the name of oh it is called a skunk yes um, that is a skunk that we just saw so but I was just hearing fireworks. Um, it almost sounds like thunder, but it wasn't. It was fireworks. And like I said, here in Massachusetts, they're illegal to buy. But literally, I can drive five miles down the road and buy them and bring them back here. And technically, it's illegal for me to set them off. But the police don't do anything about it. Um, thank you so much. I Piedad, my Spanish it was a little bit rusty, but thank you. So I said it right. Thank you so much. Um, I haven't been practicing Spanish for a while. Um, I've been listening to it. That's one thing that I'll tell you if you want to listen, if you want to practice a language, listen, listen, listen to your target language, which is what you're doing right now with listening to my English. Um, that's what I'll do with Spanish. I'll listen to Spanish a lot and I do that 
a lot, but during vacation, I have not been listening to any Spanish. The internet isn't great here. So I usually watch like videos by like Lucito, Lucito Comunica. Um, but right now the internet is not very good. I'm surprised that it's good enough to do this live stream. But if I try to watch YouTube, it's very laggy. So I'm not watching any um, Spanish videos at all. So I'm not sure what we're going to do tomorrow when it's raining. So I'm not sure if we'll be able to watch any movies on Netflix. Um, but anyway, getting back to um, the topic, we were talking about um, campfires. I'd like to know if you have campfires where you live. Um, what do you do by the campfires? If you have them, do you, do you go camping? Do you have campfires? Like we also have a backyard kind of like fire pit that we'll have. Um, fires in our backyard um, and we and we have the fires when we go camping so I'd love to know if you do this when you go camping I think Yuri said when you go places you catch fish and you cook them over the fire um, but I know Piedad you're in Colombia do you do campfires there in Colombia um, Valentin do you do campfires in Dominican Republic let me know I would really love to know if you do that um, it, is do you go camping where you live? Um, is camping a popular thing where you live? Let me know because I really would love to know. I want to know about what people do in other parts of the world. Um, this is a very popular thing all throughout the United States and Canada. Um, Yuri says we also have fires um, in nature. Um, so you go out in nature and have fires. Um, I know you said that you went fishing and you cook fish over the fire. Um, so yeah, we'll do this. Like I said, we'll do this when we go camping. I have a fire pit in my backyard and we'll have campfires or I don't know, they're not really called campfires when in the backyard, I guess they're just called backyard fires. Um, and another thing that I did is I bought like a projector so we could have outdoor movies. And I sometimes will just project a movie onto a, like basically a sheet and we'll watch a movie outside. Um, that we do in our backyard. I don't really do it when we go camping because I figure that the other people camping might not want to watch the same movie that I'm watching. So um, I like to kind of like respect people. Um, there was somebody down that way that was having a, a movie. They were projecting one, but I really wouldn't want to be playing a movie or music really loud. Um, so we can only have them near our living places. Oh, okay. All right, so that's interesting. Thank you for sharing. So Yuri lives in Kazakhstan, which I kept on saying wrong, but I've been told is Kazakhstan. Um, let me know if I'm saying it correctly. Um, so you can only have them near where you live and you can't like go out in the wild or go camping and have them. Um, so most campgrounds allow you to have campfires. Some places can't, you can't. Um, it depends probably on the, the risk of like you know, forest fires or whatnot, but um, most campgrounds around the United States allow campfires. Um, but there are some that I've gone to that don't allow it because of the risk of um, the fire to spread. So other people around, do you have campfires where you live? Let me know. Um, please let me know if that is something that you do. Um, as I said, I'm having my campfire is almost out, so we'll be ending pretty soon. You can see it's down to the coals. This would be the perfect time to make those foil dinners I was talking about, or if you were gonna make some baked potatoes, you'd wanna be cooking them on the coals so you wouldn't burn stuff. And that is actually the perfect kind of thing to use to make your s'mores, which would be the marshmallows. So one of the things that we do is we make s'mores with our marshmallows, it's upside down our marshmallows. We'll put them on a stick and then we will take chocolate. So this is some Hershey's special dark chocolate and we will take graham crackers. So we will put our marshmallow on a stick. We will roast it. Some people like to catch them on fire. Other people just like to get it brown. And then we'll take two of these graham crackers and we will put the chocolate and we'll squish it inside so it makes a sandwich and we call it a s'more. So that's one of the things that we will cook on our campfire is in this particular, as you can see, we're down to the coals right now. That's the perfect time where you're not going to catch your marshmallow on fire. You're going to be able to get it nice and toasty brown. It's also a perfect time to cook bread. Um, so there are no mosquitoes. You know what? There were a couple mosquitoes by the marsh. 
Um, but by the campsite, there hasn't been too many. Pete added, yeah, camping is common here for some families, um, specifically when they go outside. Um, they, go, they go outside their homes to tourist places such as Taki, Takakota Desert um, and um, Archaeological, I cannot say that, Park. No, it, it's archa, ar, archaeological. I can't say that. And it keeps on disappearing on me. So, yeah, logical. Can you say that, Katerina? Archaeological. archaeological Park in San Augusta, St. Augustine. And it keeps on disappearing when I'm trying to read it. Um, in Halu, um, Halua region of South Columbia. And I'm sorry if I said that wrong. Um, so thank you for sharing. I do have another friend and I don't remember exactly where she's from, but I took classes with her um, and she's um, at, she has something called Spanish Land School. And I know that she talked about camping in Colombia at one point. So I did know that there was some camping, but I didn't know how much of that. I know I went to Mexico and I, I wasn't sure at all if they did camping there. I, I didn't see any, but I wonder if they do it there. So thank you so much for sharing um, that. That. Like I said, there's camping, I think, in all 50 states here. It's very, very popular. And as you can see, there's like a lot of people have these campers, all different sizes, shapes and sizes from very old, very expensive. Um, I don't know if I wrote, no, your English was good. I just could not read the Spanish words. Um, your English was very good, Piedad. Um, and so, yeah, camping is very, very popular. And um, I guess that's it. My fire is almost out. Thank you all for joining. The rain is picking up again. Um, I enjoyed it. So thank you so much. Please like the video and share the video with other people. Subscribe. Um, oh, yes. Miss, um, you love marshmallow candies. Oh, okay. I do too. Um, and thank you. Yeah, you're welcome for the stream. Absolutely. Um, I'm glad to be able to provide it. I think it's a lot of fun to actually do this. When I first was going to stream, I was a little bit nervous, but it's been a lot of fun. Katarina's like, what are we going to stream all the time? And I said, I promise we will not stream anymore for the rest of the vacation um, because she feels like we're becoming stream bloggers. Um, but thank you so much for joining. I really enjoy it. I love talking to people all over the world. Uh, Katarina says maybe we can do one more stream during our vacation. Um, so we'll see. Um, and my Fitbit tells me it's time to get ready for bed. That's my Fitbit here. So um, thank you so much. And I'll let you know. Maybe we'll do one more stream before the end of the vacation. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right.